Hey guys, welcome back to another lunchtime live stream. So this is kind of an impromptu live stream, but there's a reason for it. So I've been getting a couple messages lately, and I gotta do this stream so that I can kind of clear the air on a couple things. Most of it has to do with arcade hardware. So we're gonna get right to it. I'm gonna lower the music here. So what's been going on is um, I got a lot of people that are watching older videos. I don't know why these videos are all of a sudden getting promoted, but they seem to be getting promoted. So people are watching videos on how to around arcade hardware. But the problem is like, if you're gonna go down this path, you gotta know the basics first. So uh, I've done videos on the basics, but this one thing keeps coming up a lot and I just wanna clear the air on this so that everyone understands. If you're gonna dive down this path, you kinda know what you're doing because you can really, all of a sudden, something that can become a, that can go from dream to nightmare pretty damn fast if you've never done it before. So thanks everyone for joining. I think we got Super Dimensional in there, a couple more people, Zerfox. I always forget how to say it, but I think I said it right this time. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for joining. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the music. This is gonna be a fast one, but it's I think it's like a mandatory one that we really need to cover. So over here on the table, we've got arcade hardware, right? So th at the basic level. You're gonna have, <laughs> you're gonna have, I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff. So I have two boards here on the table right now. I've got a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is actually a Konami PCB, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this is a Neo Geo single slot. So this is actually a multi-cart board. Now, if for some reason, the, the whole purpose of this is a lot of people are wanting to get into this, but they're not necessarily wanting to hook them up to CRTs. So if you don't hook it up to a CRT, it's a whole other ball game. You hook up an arcade board to a CRT, it's fairly easy. So you basically end up hooking up your JAMA harness to your actual PCB board. So this is your JAMA harness. And then at the end of your JAMA harness, you have this little adapter. This is actually your CGA adapter. So you're gonna go right into the monitor chassis more times than not, just directly plug it into the monitor chassis and your video is taken care of that way. And that's pretty much the same for any of these standard JAMA boards. The problem lies is when you have to hook it up or want to hook it up to an LCD. This is where stuff gets kind of messy. So you will still use the JAMA harness. However, there's another step in the middle because you can't hook this up to a modern TV or a modern monitor. It doesn't Modern monitor doesn't know what the hell to do with this. So you need what's called the CGA to VGA converter. Now, there are actually now CGA to um, HDMI converters too. So this is an example of a CGA to VGA converter. So how this would work is, let's just assume for a second that this JAMA harness is hooked up to the board, right? Uh, here's your video, right? This is your CGA. So you would simply plug this in to this board, and this is gonna convert it to a VGA output signal. So you can hook this right up to a monitor. Th that's great and all, <laughs> but the problem, the problem is, you need to know that this is a step and you also need to know something else. These things are not always plug and play. You're noticing there's all these little little switches on here. Some of these are to change the vertical position and the horizontal position of the, of the display. Some are to adjust this thing called clamp, which let's say I put this on a monitor and I've got sort of this black spot in my monitor because I can't see all the display. It'll actually push that over and start to show you a little bit more of the display. So you got to fiddle with it. I just want to set the, 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 I, I want to set the ground rules that if you're going to use these on a modern LCD display, you're going to run into things where it's not just going to plug in and work nine times out of 10. The display will have to be adjusted and manipulated, brightness, contrast, all that stuff to get it right. And you might have to change the vertical and horizontal hold and all sorts of things. So just know it's not gonna be like a plug and play thing. So this is an example of a board going from CGA to VGA. Uh, and then there's also this board. Um, there's, there's actually, I call them the red, the green, and the blue board. Um, there's, you'll, you'll find a green version of this and you'll also find a red version of this. The green and red go, both go uh, CGA to VGA. This one actually goes um, CGA. So you see the pins right here. I'll, I'll take it off this board. This one actually goes from CGA to HDMI. So this is a relatively newer board. Jeez. This is a relatively newer board out there that I've found. Uh, now, the same thing connects the same way. It's notched, so you can't really get it wrong. But when you connect it here, you can go from your arcade board to actual HDMI out. So, but keep in mind, right? 
it again, like I said, it's not going to be super straightforward, like to move the image up, down, left, right. You're going to have this. You're going to have your own on, on display menu. There's also options on here. If you hold down this button, it will automatically. This is something that happens all the time. If someone hooks up an arcade board, they're like, man, it sucks. It doesn't look good. There's a button you can press here and hold it, and it will automatically try to adjust the signal uh, and adjust sort of the display for the best, you know, the best looking it can look on the monitor that you have. So just, I, I know this is like a super quick video, but I just felt like I've been getting so many questions on this lately that it's a topic that you need to cover because it's not like you can't dive into arcade hardware and think it's going to be this like super breeze. There's some things that, you know, are going to take some time to get used to. These converter boards are definitely things that take a while to get used to. So uh, if you're doing arcade boards, you should be doing VGA. Yep. Absolutely. So I, I have a lot more success with the CGA to VGA, but depending on what your monitor is, you can do these CGA to HDMI too. I notice more success with the CGA to VGA, uh, but I use this one, for instance, if I want to hook up an arcade board to like, let's say uh, a TV, like just a regular like Samsung LCD display, like you could go from here to there if you're doing testing or whatnot. So there's all sorts of different things you can do this. So you need a CPS2 dark. <laughs> so uh, someone in the chat's talking about uh, a dark soft multi. So that's really cool. So it's this idea that you can turn an arcade um, into like a multi cade, but using uh, you use basically Capcom CPS2 hardware. And you can actually, it basically flashes the board each time with the game you want to play, which is really cool. So you're not really doing, um, you're not really doing emulation per se. You're just having something load the ROMs like directly onto the, the board. It's really cool. So it's like, it's kind of similar to like an FPGA concept, but uh, you're doing it with a physical, with physical hardware versus virtual. But check this out. So, so I know this was like a two second thing and I know a lot of you aren't going down this path, but if you do just keep in mind you got to feel comfortable with the fact that if you're going to use a modern day display, you're going to have to fiddle with it. It's not going to be this like, you know, this plug and play thing. Now, the best way to sh the best way to do this is with us with is with a traditional tube CRT monitor. Obviously, that's going to be the best way to display these. But if you should go down that path, you know, and you want to put it into an arcade cabinet, but with an LCD, you're going to need to buy or understand these converter boards. The other tip I'll give you is if you're getting into arcade hardware, I love this, this JAMA harness specifically. Uh, this is actually a company called, let me see if I can get that on the camera a little bit better. So this company, yeah, it's not going to zoom. It's not going to get in there for me. This company is called Press Your Buttons and they label the JAMA harness in English. So you actually know what the hell you're connecting. So it's a really good idea. Uh, go support this guy. If you go to just Google Press Your Buttons Arcade and it should come up and he sells these JAMA harnesses, which he takes the time to print out these labels. So it's all in English. I highly suggest if you're getting into it for the first time, you do that. So oh, that's another quick tip for you. All right, let's uh, let's check let's check what's going on in the chat right now. So you got uh, someone wants me to do the dark soft multi. I want that too, trust me. But they're super expensive. Uh, Silver sausage says always taking the time on his break to help us out. Retro for 2020. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I don't think you'd want me as president. Trust me. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, so the other cool thing is literally right before I started this stream, this came in the mail. So this is um this is a Pandora's box DX. This is the brand new hot off the press Pandora's box. Now you know my opinion on these. They're just fun. Oh, Castlemania games. What's up? That's awesome. I actually owe you an email back. I know we were going to do some some things together, reviews and stuff, and I completely spaced and I don't know. I'm having a hard time managing anything at this point with uh, with what's going on with the kids being home from work and everything. But actually, let me you know, I digress on on these on these streams when I don't have Justin. But dude, so what is up with my son? He's 12 years old. So right before this thing, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to go to the bathroom so bad. I got to take a leak before I start the stream. I go into the bathroom. It smelled like the worst subway in the world, like why doesn't the kid flush the damn toilet? Like, it's not hard to take a leak and flush the toilet. Like, I know I probably did some stuff as a kid that wasn't cool, but I definitely flushed the damn toilet. Like, it smells so nasty in there. And I'm like, dude, and he has to share that bathroom with his sister. So half the time, maybe my, maybe my daughter doesn't want to stay here because she's like, I have the subway bathroom that I have to deal with. I mean, dude, it's just a flush. It's just a flush of the toilet. Like, 
I know as a kid, I didn't take a dump. He does it with dumps too. He takes a dump and leaves it there. Like who does that? When I was a kid, I definitely didn't do that. So if you guys have like sons around my son's age, 12, 13, like what do I have to do? Like, cause clearly the smell doesn't matter to him. He'll pile like loads of pee on top of each other. He doesn't even care. Like what is up with that? It, 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 and I promise I'll get off the topic in a second, but he like, he like literally peed so much in that toilet without flushing it that it like created a ring of pee. Like I got to now clean the, it's, it's a nightmare. Anyways, I'm sorry guys. I, maybe you guys have some, he's not, he's not normal. Oh, well, dude, don't you, oh, you have a daughter though. Mike has a daughter. She daughter. See, girls are cleaner than us. But anyway, so let me talk about this real quick. So this came in the mail today. It's pretty much brand new. It just came out a little while ago. So this is the Pandora's Box DX. It promises a bunch of new stuff. It has search functionality. Supposedly it has save states. Uh, I think it has scan lines you could turn on and off. So we'll have to play with this um, over the next, like maybe I'll do a live stream tomorrow or something on just this board. It, it, I was so stoked because the doorbell rang and I'm like, hmm, I was not really expecting anybody. And uh, yeah, this came in. So I'm kind of stoked on this. But keep in mind, these Pandora's box boards are, they're good for what they're good for. You know, they're, they're emulation devices. They're decent. They do stretch the gameplay. The one thing I did notice though, so check this out. So something I didn't know about a Pandora's box board, and I feel dumb for not knowing this, but this day and age, how often are you actually connecting something like a modern game? Uh, oh, hey, Wicked Gamer, do you have this yet? I hope I have this before he does. He'll flip out. He'll get mad at me. Wicked Gamer, do you got this? Put it in the chat. I want to know if you have this. If I have something before you, I'm going to be pretty stoked. So those of you who don't know, Wicked Gamer and Collector. Oh, he doesn't have it. Oh, I have something that Wicked doesn't have. Oh, my gosh. How do I have a Pandora's box? So if you don't know Wicked Gamer and Collector, good friend of mine, he does all these Pandora's box boards. But I am, I am shocked that he doesn't have this and I do. So anyways, I'm super excited about this. Should I like, should I be like, haha, I have it and you don't, but, uh, yeah, go, go subscribe to, uh, Wicked Gamer and Collector, really good guy. He covers a lot of the Pandora's box stuff way more than I could ever cover it. Uh, and he, he pretty much covers it, you know, extensively on his channel. So he's, he's pretty co much covered every damn Pandora's box there is, but we'll, I'll get this hooked up, uh, probably tonight, play with it a little bit. The interesting thing about this one is it has wireless controllers. So this is actually sort of a console that doesn't necessarily look like a console. So it came with these kind of janky wireless controllers. You know, they're kind of like PlayStation-esque wannabe controllers. So we'll see how this works, but we'll get this thing. We'll get this thing going. I don't love the Pandora's boxes. Sometimes the emulation's a little off, but they're fun plug and play kind of devices. And that's kind of the beauty of it. If it's someone that, you know, maybe you've, Maybe you've used Pies before and you you're, you don't really want to burn images and mess with all that stuff. Like you can add games to most of these, but um, but yeah, it's you can just you can just power it up and start playing, you know. So that's kind of the beauty of it. Although Wicked, just so you know, this one didn't come with a freaking power cord. Like, what's up with them not sending the power cord? I don't I don't get that. It's super lame. So, anyways, that's all I really had, guys. I just kind of wanted to shoot the shoot the shit a little bit, see how everyone was doing. Uh, hope everyone's staying safe and everything. But I just, I had gotten all these messages and, 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 you know, the other thing to be careful for is when you go down this path of arcade hardware, like make sure you know what you're buying too. So oftentimes people will post boards like this and you got to really be careful to read the, you know, I buy a lot from eBay. You got to be careful to read. Is it a working board? You know, that does happen sometimes. So it's not a working board. And, you know, if you're not, you know, if you're not good with oscilloscopes and stuff like that, like you're not going to be troubleshooting these things. But I will say they're pretty durable for the most part. Like this one came to me in really good shape. Uh, the Neo Geo hardware seems like a tank, man. I, I, I've had this for a long time. Uh, it actually has the 4.0 Unibios on it, which is really cool when you pair it with the 161 and 1 because there's that, I can't remember that feature of the 4.0 BIOS. So actually another great channel if you like or in or, and get into arcade hardware is Scarlet Sprite. So he's actually the one that uh, burned this rom chip for or this bios chip for me really cool guy he does a lot of like arcade restorations and stuff like that so um you know the talking about arcade hardware is somewhat niche and so 
Uh, we're trying to bring it forward and bring it to people's attention and get them interested in it because a lot of it has to do with preservation of the games. So I find that really cool. And in this world we live in where like emulation and just kind of getting any game whenever we want it is so, you know, abundant, it kind of is cool to focus in on some of this older stuff sometimes and keep it alive. Uh, and also it supports these companies. I mean, even though they don't, you know, sell this stuff necessarily anymore, it's cool to be able to keep this stuff going, keep the hardware working. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it. But anyways, let's see. I'm going to see what uh, what's going on in the chat real quick, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. I know it was kind of an obscure tight, <laughs> obscure topic, and maybe maybe some of you guys are not as interested in it, but I just find this fascinating. And the other thing, while Castlemania Games is in there, I'll give him a plug as well. So they've got a lot of really cool retro game products. So something I bought from them just recent, recently is the Retro Tink 2X Pro. So if you're into you know, displaying your old old retro consoles the best way you can possible. The RetroTINK 2X Pro is really cool. I love that product. I think he sells the OSSC too. I can't remember, but uh, I think he does. Uh, but yeah, so so you can get a lot of really great things there. If you want to get um, HD RetroVision cables and things like that, they sell all those too. The thing I love about Castlemania games is they're focused on quality products. So if it's retro uh, products and you're looking for it, they're a great place to go for that stuff like that too. So I didn't realize we'd be doing like, I'm doing like live commercials. This is so cool. Uh, but anyways, no, that's really cool. Oh, they don't carry the OSSC, but I guess, uh, but they do carry. So if you're into the OSSC, cause it has that SCART connection, I believe they do sell the retro tink two X pro with the SCART input. I think they have that. So, um, I didn't know anything about SCART until, uh, I started doing, uh, more of the, Hey, I want, I want the best possible picture for my retro consoles. Then I started getting into SCART. And then, of course, you talk to someone like Wicked Gamer and Collector, SCART was on all their TVs out there. We didn't have the, that option. We had those crappy RF switches that, uh, you know, if you didn't get your game, if you didn't get those two wires on perfectly, those little two, two little U-clamps on perfectly, you get like fuzzy screen and stuff on your CRT. But anyways, I don't know. If you guys want to talk about anything really quick, you can throw it in the chat. But if not, I got to get back to work. I'm actually, for the first time in a long time, keeping on time with this. And the reason that sparked this is that someone was contacting me earlier and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to hook up these PCBs to an LCD. And that's just, it, it's not, you know, it takes a little bit. You have to understand the basics. So if you're new here and you just started, there is actually an Arcade 101 or Arcade Basics playlist I have on my YouTube channel. And if you check that out, I show how to connect uh, a Neo Geo MVS to, uh, to a modern day display. So pretty cool. But I think that's it. This is it, guys. How the heck am I done on time? This never happens. This never happens at all. Well, I hope everyone... Is everyone pretty much staying safe and everything? I hope so. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I know a lot of people... Some people are working from home. Some people... I mean, God forbid, some lost jobs, which is crazy. But I'm trying to get used to this new normal. And uh, it's not that normal. But, uh, but I think mentally, you got to try to stay sane mentally. It's really hard when you're isolating to stay sane mentally. And... We're we're already probably we're already probably introverted as it is, so it, it's hard I think to so so try your best you know go outside, go for a walk like do something to clear your head, uh, especially if you have like little kids at home and stuff like it's tough man but uh, but hopefully these little things break up your day uh, and help out I know it's not much but maybe it's a little way to get your mind off stuff uh, in the middle of the day because it sure is hard right now to keep everything you know sane and, and keeping keeping a straight mind but i'm trying to man we're only human we can only do so much but that's it guys you know i say italian goodbyes every time but that's it for now guys and please <laughs> see i already messed up no but seriously go watch go watch one up weekly if you don't know about one up weekly it's our sunday show it's at 4 p.m pacific uh, we love it. We have a ton of people join. It's really cool. It's gained a lot of momentum lately. And I don't know if that's because people are home, but we're getting more and more people viewing it. So we definitely appreciate that support. And that's it for now, guys. We will see you on the next one. See you guys. Take care. Thank you for joining. <laughs>